Hi everyone! In this video we are going to discuss main ideas and plans of the English opening. At the end of the video we are going to have an interesting exercise, so make sure to watch the video till the very end. Also, if you are for the first time here, don't forget to subscribe. In this case you will not miss any interesting content. English opening starts with the move C4 and there are so many different systems that may arise from uh, this position, uh, black has a wide choice of options. Uh, that's why it is probably not uh, that simple to understand uh, what's going on there, because there are so many pawn structures, so many different patterns that may arise, and uh, what we are going to do is to find something that uh, all these different directions have in common. Um, so let me show you several lines and then we'll try to understand the specifics together. So black may respond with something like c5 move here. As we may notice both sides are now fighting for d5 and d4 central squares. Then white may continue with the knight to f3, just a developing move. Black may do the same with the knight to f6. And then white plays a g3. And that is something that you uh, will find very typical for English opening. In a vast majority of lines, white comes up with his fianchetto. Uh, the idea is simple. White wants to put the bishop on the long h1a diagonal to exert some additional uh, pressure on the central squares, namely this d5 and also control e4 may be very important. And long term, white wants to exert some pressure on black's queen side. Uh, usually it is about attacking b7 or if the diagonal is open uh, to control a8 square, which may help with um, playing along the a file. Uh, so black may respond with a b6 here. And after the move bishop to g2 and bishop to b7, we can see that both sides now fight for this long diagonal. After something like castling, let's say e6, knight to c3, and bishop to e7, in the vast majority of cases from here, uh, we reach so-called hedgehog. So uh, what does it mean? White usually plays something like d4 sooner or later, and after the exchange of these pawns, uh, we get this pawn structure uh, in which uh, black usually puts his pawns like this to control uh, a lot of squares on the fifth rank and develops his other pieces in a very flexible way while white is trying to uh, exploit the advantage in space, uh, maybe to grab even more space, so on and so forth. But once again, this diagonal h1, a8 is uh, in many cases focus number one, so both sides are trying to uh, control it and to predict the uh, dynamic or strategic changes in the sense of uh, controlling this diagonal so that uh, to prevent opponent from actually seizing the complete control over it. Let's have a look at the other uh, possible pawn structure. So after c4 let's say black is responding uh, in a style of uh, queen's gambit. So let's say knight goes to f6 first, then after knight to f3 and e6, we can see that black is trying to occupy d5 square with the pawn. Uh, let's say g3, d5, bishop goes to g2, bishop goes to e7, white is castling, black is castling, and white plays b3 move here. To be honest, at any point here, uh, this uh, may transpose to Catalan, and that is one of the advantages of English opening. It is very flexible, so uh, you perform this panquetto, and again, it's not forced, so you may choose it, you may choose uh, different lines, uh, it's not forced. Uh, but if you perform this panquetto, then you have, in many cases, a flexibility of playing it in a pure English style or you can just transpose to some uh, lines that uh, usually arise after white's first d4 move. So for example here if white plays just d4 it's one of the tabias of Catalan. Uh, b3 is a different story, a different beast, but uh, what I'm trying to show you that uh, even here, although it looks completely different from the previous example, uh, we can see the same thing. 
actually defined for the long diagonal h1 a8. So after c5, black is trying to be more aggressive in the center, white responds with the bishop to b2, uh, knight goes to c6, controlling the center and um, actually simply continuing with the development. White may play something like e3. Pay attention to uh, the possibilities of black uh, to play something like d4 earlier or right now. So white will be not against it, although it grabs some additional space for black, but it opens the long diagonal and that is what white is actually trying to get. Uh, an active bishop on this long h1 a8 diagonal. So uh, instead of playing that, black may choose something like b6. Then the knight goes to c3, bishop goes to b7, c takes d5. Now, if black captures with the pawn, for example, we get another pawn structure after d4, for example, there may be uh, two options, either black, say, captures on d4 and there will be an isolated pawn on d5. And by the way, in this case, the bishop will be placed very uh, good on g2, already attacking it, compared to some lines with the isolated uh, queen pawn in uh, queen's gambit where to attack it with the light square bishop you need to maneuver it here it's already on the needed diagonal or in other scenarios that white at some point captures on c5 let's say and again either black takes with the piece and there is an isolated pawn or black captures with the pawn and we have a so-called uh, hanging pawns pattern and these pawns may be quite vulnerable so that's the one thing uh, that may happen here, uh, just showing how rich the position is. Another option for black is to take with the knight here. And in this case, uh, after knight takes d5 and let's say queen takes d5, as we may notice that uh, black is just trying to do everything to avoid the pattern of either isolated pawn or hanging pawns, trying to take with a piece. Uh, well, white may continue with the d4. And we can see that this queen becomes a target. Uh, for now, white has created a bunch of threats based on the jump of the knight, mainly to e5 square, uh, followed by some simplifications um, and stuff. And once again, the key piece here is bishop on g2, and everything is happening now on this long diagonal. So both sides is trying to do something. White is trying to get an active bishop here and create some threats on this diagonal. Black is trying to do everything to uh, either make it not that dangerous or to close that diagonal altogether or maybe to come up with some counterplay which will compensate white's domination on this diagonal. Let's have a look at the other possible pawn structure. So again, after c4, black may choose anything, almost anything uh, they want. And one of these moves is e5. And uh, one very interesting feature of this direction is that uh, it resembles the Sicilian. Literally, it's uh, just a Sicilian reversed, which means that white has kind of extra tempo in a Sicilian. So a lot of ideas from the Sicilian apply here, uh, but it doesn't mean that if you know Sicilian that you can skip learning the uh, pure English opening theory because, well, after all, white has extra tempo and this affects the evaluations of different positions and lines. And some lines are simply impossible because of the fact of white having this extra tempo. Uh, but the rest is actually the same. So white is kind of playing the Sicilian reversed uh, and still trying to uh, bring the bishop to this lone diagonal h1 a8. Uh, so, in some cases, it's like a dragon Sicilian even. So, after the move g3, black may continue with the knight to f6, bishop may go to g2, now controlling d5. And, once again, black has a white choice, just like uh, white has a white choice in the Sicilian defense. Uh, so, d5 is pretty much in the spirit of normal Sicilian, but there are also other possibilities for black. For example, here, black may try something like c6, uh, trying to put the pawn on d5 and occupy the center. In which case, uh, white may try knight to f3, attacking e5. Black continues with the e4, knight goes to d4, then black plays d5. And here we can see a different approach. Uh, so 
in previous examples, Black uh, actually fought for uh, the long diagonal together with White. Here, Black is trying to actually close it with pawns. So, in this particular case, White's most natural plan should be to try to open this diagonal and for Black, uh, of course, to keep this pawns alive. After C takes D5, C takes D5 and D3. Uh, in this particular case, it feels like um, White is a bit more successful than Black in pursuing the main goal. After Bishop goes to C5, for example, Knight goes to B3. Bishop goes to b6. Position looks pretty good for black, but after castling, castling, knight to c3, attacking e4, bishop to f5, and bishop to g5, it's clear that black is in trouble uh, because both e4 and d5 are under serious pressure. And the knight f6, which is a great defender, both is uh, pinned and may be captured at any moment. So uh, there is a serious pressure in the center here and uh, e4 or d5, one of them will most likely drop in the nearest future. Uh, so obviously it's just a concrete example, uh, but sort of this pawn structure may arise from different opening lines uh, in within the English opening. And uh, you should understand that it's always risk if you play it with black pieces and you expand this way, uh, you occupy the center aggressively uh, you may get very good looking position, but you should always uh, understand that there will be consequences. And one of the most typical ones is this undermining activity, which means that white is doing everything to get rid of your e4 and d5. Let's have a look at the other possible pawn structure. So another option for black here is to put the knight on c6 and to control d4 square this way and simply continue the development uh, and after white's knight to c3 uh, there are different choices for example there may be something like bishop to b4 which leads to uh, reverse Rossellimo. Uh, there may be bishop to c5 which is uh, an interesting mix of uh, grand prix attack which is normally something like with uh, the pawn on f5 instead and just this bishop uh, c4 uh, line in Sicilian. In some cases, it's a good way for uh, white to avoid uh, main lines of the Sicilian. And why am I talking about Sicilian? Because, well, it's just the Sicilian reversed. Uh, and another way is to play g6, which is again uh, something that is resembling the closed Sicilian line. g6, knight goes to f3, bishop goes to g7, castling castling. Uh, white plays d3 here, d6 is a black's response, so black is ready to continue with the development of the light squared bishop. In many cases a good idea could be to try to exchange the bishop on g2, so typical maneuver bishop somewhere then queen supports it and then this bishop lands on h3. Uh, of course black needs some preparation to make it real. And just like in closed variation of the Sicilian, uh, white continues with the rook to b1 here, preparing this b4 and b5 plan. Also very typical stuff for English opening. And again, pay attention how it is aligned with the idea of making the bishop active on this h1a8 diagonal. Uh, so at the moment, as we may notice, there is the knight on c6 and pawn on b7. So diagonal is rather open, but there is nothing to attack for that bishop. So white is trying to bring the pawn to b5 to get rid of the knight and when the knight is elsewhere there will be an instant and long-term pressure on b7 coming from that bishop. If there is no pawn on b7 at some point, so let's imagine uh, under this pressure black decides to play something like b6, this will completely open the diagonal and white will control the a8 square. So imagine that a file is open and it is possible to do by pushing another pawn here and just opening this. Uh, file, then that bishop controlling a8 square will increase white's chances to occupy that file to win the fight for it and just control maybe the only open file in the position at that moment. Because we should never forget English opening is a closed opening and well opening of the position here uh, is not that simple. 
So after rook to b1 and let's say a5 preventing it, white may continue with a3. After h6, controlling g5 square and preparing bishop e6, comfortable development of the light squared bishop, white may continue with the b4. After exchanges here, bishop to e6, b5, and knight to e7, we get very typical position for uh, English opening. As I said before, there is a pressure on b7. Uh, and what has a bunch of different plans. For example, a typical thing may be connected with just moving the knight f3 somewhere, maybe maneuvering it through e1 to c2 and then to b4 or maybe e3, uh, unleashing the bishop, attacking b7 at the same time, controlling d5, maybe intending to land there at some point. Uh, again, everything can be combined with occupying the a file and fighting for it. There are also some interesting possibilities in the center. Sometimes white may continue with something uh, paradox like plain e4 even, not necessarily in this particular position, but in similar ones, closing the diagonal for the bishop, but grabbing some space, preventing black from playing d5. And then at some point again in the future, continuing with the d4. Once again, it's just a scheme. I'm not discussing this particular position right now. Just trying to give you as many ideas as possible. So let's get back to d5, uh, which uh, looks like an open Sicilian reversed. So in this position, black continues with the d5, playing aggressively in the center. C captures on d5, knight takes on d5, and knight goes to c3. Now the position looks like an accelerated dragon, uh, but uh, well, compared to classic Sicilian, uh, accelerated dragon here it is uh, accelerated twice because white has uh, one extra tempo compared to that situation which means that anything that is connected with the castling loan is probably not even possible here black just doesn't have so much time uh, to prepare the typical Yugoslav attack typical for normal dragon so if you think about it, uh, white is ready to attack in the center already and the knight is under attack as well. So if you start doing things like protecting the knight here with the help of bishop to e6, you lose a control over b7 and white may use it with the queen to b3 stuff as well as d4 at the right moment which will completely destroy your attacking plans. So that is one very important distinction from the normal Sicilian. So not everything works the same. So normally black responds with the knight to b6. White continues with knight to f3. Knight goes to c6 protecting the pawn. White castles and black plays bishop to e7. Which now looks like a normal dragon stuff but black is choosing to castle short instead of uh, castling long which means uh, we deal with this not very ambitious not very dangerous version of a dragon um, after d3 move castling and a3 uh, white is preparing the b4 move so it's well if you will kind of dragadorf so mix of ideas and um the rest is pretty simple if you are familiar with uh, Sicilians. So typical stuff here uh, is to fight for c5 square. Um, another idea for white is just to come up with this minority attack. The c file is very important. The bishop is exerting pressure on the knight on c6, so on and so forth. Uh, for black, since uh, position is no longer that closed and diagonal h1, a8 is also uh, looking like the one which belongs to the bishop now. So for black it's important to come up with some counterplay and normally it is in the center because black controls the center slightly better than white. So black's typical idea here is to put the knight on d4 at the right moment. So in this particular case black has a choice between stopping white from playing b4 or just completely focusing on uh, central play. So let's start with the a5. It looks very natural to prevent uh, b4, which grabs indeed a lot of space on the queen side. In this case, white may continue with the bishop to e3. Then after bishop to e6, something like knight to a4 looks logical, exerting pressure on the knight, which is a bit more vulnerable after a7, a5 than before. 
uh, at the same time intending to bring the knight to c5. Sometimes it happens that bishop lands there. For example, after knight to d5 move, exerting pressure on the bishop, bishop can go to c5. And if black uh, overestimates uh, their position, I'm placing like b5, then after uh, bishop e7, queen to e7, there may be something like rook to c1 attacking uh, the knight. And you can see that if black captures on a4, white captures on c6. And already here, it's clear that the pawn structure is uh, completely damaged because uh, black committed several weakening uh, moves. And uh, now we may notice that not only the whole diagonal is under pressure, there are also concrete things like the backward pawn on c7, the weakness of the c6, the weakness of the c5, and so on. For example, after knight to c5, knight takes f3, bishop captures on f3, and so like rook a7 trying to go away from this pin. Uh, white can simply capture on e6, and after queen takes e6 and rook to c5, black is just in trouble. It's pretty one-sided position. Uh, only white has uh, chances to win it in this particular chance because only black has weaknesses in this particular case. So, um, What's going on in this uh, line? Well, nothing surprising, again, if you are familiar with uh, these lines in normal Sicilian dragon. Uh, let's have a look at one more uh, position, one more uh, typical situation in the center to conclude this introductory video. Another approach here is to ignore the idea of before and let white play it. So black may continue with the developing move bishop to e6 and after b4, just like in many Sicilians uh, or similar pawn structures from English opening, uh, black may try to exploit this b4 and undermine it with the a5 move. Uh, because once these pawns start moving, they weaken certain squares and in the future black may try to use those weaknesses. Uh, in this particular position, of course, it's better for white to continue with the b5 because this way white is grabbed in space and attacking the knights, uh, which we already know is a uh, great piece in the sense of covering the diagonal and uh, making that bishop on g2, we can call it an English bishop, uh, not so dangerous. So it's no longer the case now the diagonal is under serious pressure, but black is trying to compensate it with active central play. So after the knight lands on d4, we may notice that there is instant pressure on some weakened light squares in white's camp. So here, black is uh, exerting pressure not only on b3 and c2, knight is also attacking e2 and the knight on f3. And in general, black is not against changes like knight takes d4 and e takes d4. Because in this case, uh, the e-file becomes open and we may notice this pawn on e2, black may regroup his pieces to attack that pawn in the future. Also, this pawn on d4 now controls c3, which is a weakened square, and black may relocate the knight to attack that square. So there are some advantages in this pawn structure. Um, so white should do something uh, with that knight, uh, but probably it's not the right moment to change the situation. So one of the typical responses here is just to play bishop to b2 and after uh, that move uh, once again black may try various things uh, generally speaking something like bishop to b3 looks active annoying but it's not very dangerous for white because queen simply goes away and other pieces have enough space to uh, go away in case they are attacked uh, if something like knight to b3 happens then just work to b1 and uh, yes, this knight is active on b3, but at the same time, it is quite vulnerable. However, black may think of playing something like f6 here, just overprotecting e5 um, and uh, basically strengthening the pawn structure in the center. Uh, white may continue with the knight to d2, very simple idea of just exchanging that knight on b3 after this simplification, for instance, uh, and uh, black's knight to c4 jump using the fact that d3 is pinned. So if d takes c4, then queen just takes queen. So this way, black 
make sure that uh, there will be at least a pair of bishops advantage after queen to c1, knight captures on b2, and queen captures on b2. Indeed, black has a pair of bishops. But the thing is, this position is uh, not that open yet, so these bishops uh, have nothing to attack. While uh, white has now the apparent pressure on uh, b7, because diagonal is now completely open. And pay attention how important it is to have the pawn on b5, because black doesn't have this simple c6 move to close the diagonal for the bishop. Would be nice. Just imagine this pawn somewhere else, and there is literally no problem with the diagonal whatsoever. Like just play c6, and that's it. But the pawn is on b5, so c6. Even if it is tactically possible, it's always connected with creating a weakness because white may take, and then after b takes c6, you will have an isolated pawn on the c file, a perfect target for white's pieces to attack. So, all in all, I would say that this position is not so pleasant for black to play, although having a pair of bishops and uh, understanding that for uh, using their power you need to open a position you can damage your pawn structure you can pay this price but activate your bishops and well in many cases you will have sufficient counter play depends on your skills um, so that's basically the last example i wanted to discuss in this video and let's try to understand what makes all these examples all these different pawn structures look alike uh, well, generally it is White's idea of controlling the uh, long diagonal, h1, a8, so this light squared bishop fianchetto. And Black's counterplay based on either exploiting something weakened in White's position, uh, or closing this diagonal with pawns, or bringing own bishop to that diagonal so that there is fight for the control over this diagonal. Of course, there is much more to English opening. Uh, it's just a very generic introduction, but I think you should already understand what it is more or less about. Now let's get to the exercise. Okay, so after knight to d4 in one of the lines that we have discussed, um, I'm not sure if you noticed, but e5 pawn was hanging. Uh, although I mentioned that after knight d4, black creates some threats to weakened squares like b3, c2, so some things like bishop to b3 or knight to b3 become uh, a reality. Uh, nevertheless, what is going to happen if white simply captures on e5? The question is, is it possible in general? Um, is it good for white? Maybe it's good for black? So. Just try to evaluate this continuation and try to find best moves for both sides. The solution of this exercise will be provided in a separate video. Make sure not to miss it. Thanks a lot for your attention. Don't forget to subscribe and like this video if you really liked it. See you.